friends, Dean here with Escape to Gaming. Today is a very special episode. Um, I, I'm just speechless, to be honest. I've got some very wonderful things here, some gifts that I wanted to share with you that I've <clears throat> recently got from some good friends and viewers. I just absolutely flabbergasted with, frankly, all of them. You know, I just, it makes me remember, I remember back to like 2009 when I got on, you know, <clears throat> YouTube for the first time, right around 2008, 2009, and I followed, you know, IGN and GameSpire, like four or five channels, that was it. I just, I didn't care about seeing other channels, and then slowly over the years I would pick up one or two other channels I really liked, but it was really all about Market Classic Game Room. That was my biggest impetus to have my show, and even after he had his interview with me, did a three-part interview, uh, he had thousands of hits on it. I didn't even have a channel then. I mean, other than, I mean, I was had a channel where I can go in and comment and like their videos, but I didn't have my own channel. My channel probably would have blown up overnight if I had thought ahead, but I, I've never been one to exploit my own channel. This, my channel probably could have been huge by now, 15, 20,000, 100,000 by now, if I hadn't have pissed off so many people with my very opinionated views and, near, frankly, narrow-minded viewpoints. And I, and I, I see that about myself. I know a lot of you have frustrations with certain things that you'll hear me say, and you'll agree with a good portion of me. Maybe you like my persona, but you don't see eye to eye with my politics or with my viewpoints of you know playing <clears throat> video games as a woman or whatever it is. I, I understand. I, I validate, and that's the beauty of <clears throat> YouTube that we can all have different points of views and have different ways of looking at life. Um, it, it's a uh, it's just, it, it, it's amazing how long I've been doing this on YouTube. I've almost given up a few times. There's so many times I've just been discouraged. Sometimes just over work, work got in the way. This last year I worked so hard, you know, five and six days a week and putting in long hours. There were, by the time I'd get home, it was like 13 hours, you know, since when I left the house at 5.30 in the morning, get home at 6.30 at night. That's like a 13-hour day with commuting and working all day in the heat. and It's tough, but... <clears throat> And I, even then, I would try to squeeze out a video. It would be tough. Sometimes it would take me two weeks to make one video. But I, I've tried to be consistent with it, but I've almost dropped out a few times. And other times I've got a lot of negative trolling and interactions with certain people that were just, you know, hateful of me for whatever reason and took it perhaps too far. And I'm like, who needs this grief? I just almost hit a button and just shut the whole channel down. I mean, I've come that close to it. And I've aired that a few times, and people, oh, Dean, please don't. Whatever you do, don't don't shut your channel down. We love you. We appreciate you. You're like one of the only honest people left that <clears throat> is forthright and genuine that we can come to on YouTube. <clears throat> and it makes me feel honored and privileged that you guys put me on that kind of a pedestal. I certainly don't, you know, don't deserve it. <clears throat> I'm just a struggling little YouTuber struggling to play games, especially now with my back. It's just, you know, on fire, literally. feels like someone put an iron right on my lower back. It's just without the constant, you know, having to take pain meds or <clears throat> getting enough sleep. My wife, thankfully, has been giving me trying some sleeping herbs, which has been helping me sleep lately. I've actually been getting more sleep, not enough sleep, but at least like three hours at a time, which is for me is a lot right now with what I'm going through. So um, I appreciate your patience. <clears throat> I may not always make sense. You may hear me repeat myself a few times. I'm very tired, but I do this because I really love the community and love doing this YouTube thing. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> continue doing it as, as long as I can <clears throat> because of this, because of the interaction, because of the good friends that I've made on YouTube over the years. <clears throat> Some people will come and go in your life like characters of a play. You know, you watch a play and you'll see certain characters and they'll be hot and heavy one minute and then you'll see them exit the stage and then you never see them again the rest of the play. That's kind of how life is, you know. You have people that enter your life and exit your life. <clears throat> it's kind of like a revolving door. There are a few that have been there since the beginning. Not many, but a few left. Sometimes the few that are still watching don't always comment. They comment only once in a while, but when they do, it, it just... It makes my heart melt. That it's like, oh, thank God, I haven't seen you in a year, dude. It's so nice to hear from you again, dude. I watch your things all the time. Don't ever give up. Don't ever quit being you. And so I've tried to be authentic and genuine. I love Mark Bustler, Classic Game Room. You know, it's sad to see him go down the road of the heavy commercialization that he's gone. I get it. He's just trying to hang on to what he feels he's good at. 
and he wants to <clears throat> continue to make a living at it like he did at one time very easily when YouTube was, you know, there was good money in it at one time. And people aren't making the money on YouTube, so they're sadly going to Patreon. You know, I've recently coined the phrase that I've always been an ad and Patreon free channel and always will be. I've never monetized since 2012 and I never will. I'm proud to have coined that phrase. <clears throat> Uh, I, I, I just, it's never been about making money. It's been about sharing my experiences with others. We live in a day and age where human interaction's gone in a physical capacity. God, I had friends back in the 90s. I mean, every week I had two, three friends coming over, plus my wife's friends and their husbands. We're barbecuing, we're playing games. I'm down in L.A. visiting from the desert, and I go over a friend's house. He's got two new friends, and i got two new buddies that are into gaming. We're playing PlayStation 1 games all night long and hanging out. My wife is tapping me on the shoulder. Dude, we got to, you know, an hour and a half drive back. We get to leave. Oh, hold on. We finished this level. <clears throat> and it just the good times that we had, and that's gone now. We live in an age, even when I was working full time, I had good friends at work, but <clears throat> trying to get them to do something after hours, it's like all I care about is just going into their phone and just going into their house. And then they do everything is over the phone now. No one wants to get together. Other than Steve Baker coming by a handful of times, or me going down to see him once, <clears throat> I mean, I rarely see anyone. I see, you know, Cameron of Industrial Gamer once a year at Christmas or Thanksgiving. This year it'll be Thanksgiving, you know. And <clears throat> it's very special. I wish I could see him more often. I wish I could go to E3 with Cameron. I would have loved to have gone with him as he planned the itinerary. And, Dean, we're going to sit here, we're going to see this show, and go here and go there. You know, and I always love hearing his impressions of E3 because of that. Because <clears throat> he's one of the unique... People. He's a passionate gamer like myself. He's been doing it since he was a little kid. He's been on YouTube a lot longer than I am, a lot bigger channel. <clears throat> and I love to hear. He's one of the old timers that's been with me from the beginning. <clears throat> and I'm so thankful to have these long friends and fans from way back. It's um, <clears throat> It means a lot to me. I really have enjoyed the long-term interaction with these people. And some of them I've been fortunate enough to see in person. Angel, my good friend Angel, I used to see him down in Los Angeles, in the Ontario area, before he moved to, to, to Texas to find a better life or a more affordable way of life for himself and his family. And I encouraged him to go. He was, dude, should I go? Should I stay? I said, you got to think about the long-term picture for you and your family. you get got a lot of pressure for everyone and relatives want you to stay, but you do what's best for you. And for him, it was best to move to make the big money there where he could afford to buy a house where he could in Southern California. So I encouraged him. You know, he's been very grateful. In return, he sent me that PS4 Pro, which I did not deserve at all. I just was shocked. Like, dude, I mean, if he had bought me a, a $10 used game, I would have been thrilled, you know. And I I have actually started off as a donator on YouTube. I never was into getting anything. I was, just, I was the one that was donating to everyone. I just loved that interaction. It was so cool. It was like a magical thing. It was finally a way to get away from TV in 2007. I ripped that coaxial out of the wall and never returned to cable TV. I'm not missing nothing. And every once in a while we'll go over a relative's house or something, we'll see the TVs on constantly in the background. We see all the ads and the bullshit and the chopped up TV shows and all of the political correctness even on TV. It's already ruining gaming. I, it's really ruined television from what I've seen. <clears throat> I just can't can't fathom it. I just, I'm so glad that YouTube was, to me, was like rea real reality TV. These were real people. You know, Lawn Boys post-1975. There's a dude in Bristol, England, sitting on the end of his bed, talking about his memories of the Super NES or the PlayStation 1. I mean, when I saw that guy, I didn't try to emulate him or copy him. I'm going to sit on the end of my bed and talk about games. And I didn't try to emulate him. I just said, you know what? Thank God that there's a Dave at Lawn Boys Post. And I love the guy for that. We've had hour-long Skype sessions quite often, drinking beers together on Skype. It was good times, you know. I need to get back to that, Dave, if you do see this. <clears throat> I'm sorry I've gotten away from seeing you at Skype. Maybe now I'm home more often. Maybe we could actually do that again. i got to see if my Skype still works. I haven't checked it out in like two years, I think. But <clears throat> those are the good old times, you know. With Mark Bustler's show, I didn't try to emulate Classic Game Room and copy their signage and do th things just like him. I wanted to come up with my own ideas. What could Dean Thompson bring to YouTube that's different from any other show? So I came up with this whole theme, Escape to Gaming. <clears throat> the music, I got a hold of Austin back in Florida and wrote him in, you know emails and 
dude, would it be okay if I, you know, I love your cover song for this Escape from New York cover. Could I use it? And he said, oh, yeah, I'm a gamer, too. And I even offered to send him some games. He wouldn't take anything from me. He said, dude, I'm just thrilled. He said, he's a cool shirt, by the way. He loved my Black Sabbath shirts. <clears throat> and he said, you, you can use any of my songs. Just put a link to just say that, you know, the music is by me or put a link for the song. Or whatever. And I've, I've done that ever since. Because I, I'm so appreciative <clears throat> that someone let me use that. And that, that was the internet that I was becoming <clears throat> really infused with, was just <clears throat> making new friends in a world where we're getting away from real social scenes. You don't have real friends in the world. They actually come over and you see face to face with a bowl of Doritos <clears throat> in front of a game you know, system anymore. Those days are gone. Today it's all about online, it's all about the internet. <clears throat> and so that's why I try to bring something from the old days into the new days. I try to be an original. You know, <clears throat> I, even my, my driving blogs. I mean, I, I saw other people doing driving blogs. They would just do the whole thing would be in the car. But I said, well, I'm going to do them and mix them up. So I do a driving blog going to GameStop to get, <clears throat> you know, the first PlayStation 4, the midnight launch. And then when I come back, I'd say, okay, now I'm going to take this into the game room. And that was my kind of my idea of bringing that. <clears throat> and I've seen other people have copied that formula. But I've tried to do things that were different, that were, I was like, what can I do that's different from anyone else? Be authentic, be an original. And that's what I've tried to do with the Escape to Gaming thing. I try to be completely different, and probably in some ways I'm probably too different, you know. Not everyone likes my long intros, I get it. Solid Rev hates them, he fast forwards, so I said, it's cool, dude, it's all right. No hard feelings, I get it. I'm an old-fashioned TV person. I used to work in TV and <clears throat> movie productions and set painting and set sign painting and stuff. So to me, I wanted that kind of like a 15-minute or half-hour TV show, you know, minus the damn commercials. No ads. You'll never see ads on my thing unless someone takes claims one of my things and puts ads on it. And that's the only way you'll ever see an ad, ever. I've always been ad and Patreon-free <clears throat> or any other form of, you know, payment. I don't care about that. It's just, I don't, that's not why I'm in this. I do this because I love doing it. I love to share my recent Xbox, and I had a lot of good feedback on that. I, I, I have been, I can't tell you how exciting it was to see arcade games that I had completely forgotten. 30, 40 years, they've just ripped from my consciousness. And all of a sudden, seeing the names and seeing the picture on the top of the cabinet, and then the gameplay, it was like a walk down memory lane. Very, oh, very fascinating. <clears throat> to see this over and over again, to see <clears throat> all this, my history coming back. And that's what this whole show is about, is it's one old dude talking about his gaming past, but yet embracing the new shit that's coming down the pike as well. I've tried to, you know. <clears throat> I haven't liked everything that's come out, uh, but I do like a lot of it. I've been trying, I've actually been gaming more the last few days. I've found ways that I can lay down on the couch with the older games and playing the last two days Urban Chaos. In fact, I love this so much, I'm going to be doing a review of this. I don't know when, maybe in the next couple of weeks, and I'm also going to finally finish my Wolfenstein to Return to Castle <clears throat> review because my computer is so maxed out with videos, I need to dump a lot of videos, and I've got like an entire gameplay of that whole game jamming up space, hard drive space in my computer. So I need to do a review just so I can get rid of all that footage in there, <clears throat> free up some you know hard drive space. But anyway... So my thing has changed. I wanted to initially just do reviews like Mark Bustler, but then I ended up doing vlogs, and people seem to like the vlogs. My reviews are so-so. Some people like them because at least I'm passionate and I'm real about what I like about the game. I just don't have the best gameplay, and I don't have the best capturing devices and all that. I never have, and probably never will. You'll still see me film my own TV quite often. <laughs> You know, and that's as good as it gets, you know, but it's people that like me for that because I'm authentic. I'm not trying to be something that I'm not. I mean, I've tried to embrace some of the high-tech stuff, and I struggle with it. If I someone put a Mac-10 to my head right now and said, dude, how does that PVR work of yours? I'd just say, you know what, pull the trigger because I can't remember. I, I tried to find my notes on it recently. I can't even find the notes on my how to use my PVR. I'm going to have to go on YouTube and probably invest three and a half hours reading researching it all over again. I forget all how it hooked up and how all the programs work, the software. <clears throat> it's like out of sight, out of mind. I'm old-fashioned and my brain is not what it used to be. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> so that, that's my, you know, advice. If you got a YouTube channel, and, you know, like Solid Rev, I mean, I would never attempt to do what Solid Rev does and sit in a big armchair and go out and get yoked and sit in front of the camera with a t-shirt on and a Chevy Thunder hat on. 
<clears throat> and pontificate about what I hate about games or love about the latest games or E3 or whatever. I always love his E3 coverage. I, he finally did his first piece on it last night on this new Stadia thing, another cloud-based gaming. Who gives a shit? I'll never touch the thing. So, I, To me, I see that ruining gaming and game collecting, frankly. That's the beginning of the end. I'm just like embracing Armageddon. Everyone's like, oh, wow, it's going to be great. I'm like, dude, it's going to be the demise of gaming as we know it. So, but I, you know, I'm thankful that people like Rev tried it. He tried the live online live thing, you know, years ago. He showed that yesterday in his video. <clears throat> I remember that when that came out. Mark Bustler did too, and the terrible lag up the ass with that system. And maybe the new one they'll perfect that for people that are fortunate enough to have the killer high speed internet. I, I don't know. It's just not for me. So, <clears throat> this show has always been about <clears throat> me and my narrow-minded views, which some people like. Some people just like me talking about them, even if they don't agree with them, and I appreciate that. Thank you for putting up with me. I know I can be a pain in the ass sometimes. <clears throat> it's just who I am. I just try to be the real guy, and if you were here face-to-face, -face, this is how I would talk with you, you know. Cameron of Industrial Gamer will tell you, this is what we do. We sit in a big table <clears throat> at a restaurant, and we talk and share ideas, and and uh, it's very much like, you know, me sitting here talking now. It's the same deal. <clears throat> Steve Baker has seen it, too. He's seen me. I'm sure there's aspects of things I say that probably make him cringe. But he's been a loyal, faithful friend, very good friend, <clears throat> and I really appreciate uh, his help. In fact, Steve had some gifts here for me. I'll start to segue into my, into my gifts now. Um, Steve came by the other day, and he helped me with some yard work. I can't do it right now. I can, can't do it. Lift anything over a couple pounds. I mean, I can't even, to me to bend over and lift my cat Oliver up or Vinny up is very painful, and I pay for it afterwards, sometimes for hours afterwards. So I have to be real, I have to, even sitting here, I'm sitting with my back just kind of right in front of the back of the chair. Every now and then I, I, I touch it, and it's like, it just like sends a shock wave right up my spine. So it's <clears throat> painful, but I'm finding ways around this so I can continue to do YouTube, and especially gaming. I miss gaming. I want to get back to games like this. This game is really good, by the way. This is It came out near the end after the Xbox 360 had just come out. That's how late this came out in the Xbox PS2 cycle, but it's an outstanding game. God, if they could remake this today, I, I'd be all over it. This would be the perfect game. Perfect. But anyway, that's another, <laughs> another rant. <clears throat> so Steve came by, and he brought a couple things by. Uh, my He brought by, he had, I had my, I found this all original, beautiful complete twisted metal tall box with the foam and the disc and it had the disc, the early disc had blue on the disc that's how you could tell an early one and he took that blue disc for me and he had and it was scratched all the hell but it was all original everything was in the box so he had it polished for me thank you Steve so much it's, it's got a flawless disc now he's going to do the same thing with my freedom fighters hopefully <clears throat> he also brought me a couple games by we always I had a gift for him too. We always exchange a few gifts. Sometimes it's a lot. Sometimes just a few things. This is a lot for me. I appreciate Steve. This is one I've actually wanted. Thank you so much, Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. A great platformer. I've always wanted to play this. I've never played it. It's one of the pioneering iconic platforming games. So now I've got this. Thanks to my buddy Steve. All original, <clears throat> the original Xbox of love. And he got me this um. Let me get my old man glasses on here. This is God of War Ascension, I believe. Yeah, it is. God of War Ascension in a steel case for the PlayStation 3. Very, very cool. So thank you, Steve. This is a beautiful gift. I Now I'm slowly getting all the God of War games on the PlayStation 3. I'm trying to get them all. I'm getting the same with the PS2. So I'm finally getting there. <clears throat> if that's not enough, I had a couple people that have reached out to me recently and said, Dean, do you have... Do you have an email address, something we can talk to you about getting your address? Oh, okay. So I sent him a you know, shot on my email thing and then deleted it in the comments real quick. And I've had two people. I get them both confused. Now, this fellow that <clears throat> sent me these things the other day, sadly, I don't know his name. I'm going to, I, it might be in the email. I should have thought ahead to get your name, my friend. I, I, I'll just praise you for it here. And <laughs> Sorry that I don't have your name. There was no return name or address in the box. So I didn't even know who this came from. And I've got a couple people at the same time that said they were sending me things, but didn't say what the things were, so I didn't know what was coming from which person. Um, I did get a package last night that actually had someone's name in it, Michael, which, so at least I know who that is. And I can, you know, so sorry, my friend. I, I, just know that I appreciate the gesture very much. I'm going to, as soon as this is over, when I load this into my PC, I'm going to look and get your name and get it right. 
because uh, I do appreciate this. You can put it in the comments who you are if you gave these gifts because I can interact with you. I very much appreciate it. He sent me a couple of books. One of them is this wonderful game, game a book called The Art of Game Characters. Gorgeous book, and it's just got nothing but fantastic pictures of gaming characters and how they were developed and designed from day one. Very impressive. I'm really impressed by this book. Beautiful book. I'm going to have it on my coffee table and enjoy it for a while until I finish. I'm actually reading it all the way through. Very cool. He knows I like strategy guides. So he sent me a Splinter Cell strategy guide. Dude, thank you so much. This is... I need... I, I need to get, I used to have the PS3 trilogy of the Splinter Cells. I need to get it again. I traded in like an idiot. I should have kept it. I think I do have the original Splinter Cell, all the Splinter Cell games for the original Xbox, so, which is, at least I have those. So thank you. I, this is going to be great. I already had um, two other ones. I have a Double Agent Strategy Guide, and I've got Splinter Cell Conviction. So I'm only missing a few. I'll get the other ones in time, but... These are, and believe me, this is a game where a strategy guide actually comes in useful. It's quite useful with something like this. So, <clears throat> thank you very much, my friend, for those wonderful books. That was so cool. Oh, and he had another one. I forgot. Here's another one, which is a game that I just recently got, thanks to my good friend Jeremy back in Ohio, and that's Brute Force. Beautiful. This is a really old, <clears throat> from the early 2000s strategy guide. This is very, very cool. I, I'm so thankful to find the game and now even have the guide book for it. Thank you, my friend. These are ch cherished. I love these in my strategy guide collection. I need. I wish I could have the money to get more this year, but it's going to be a while before I buy any others. <clears throat> I got two other sets of gifts. So last night I went to the mailbox and my wife says, we've been waiting for something to come in the mail regarding my situation I'm in. And so I've been out every day. I go out there with my cane and hobble out to the mailbox to get it. I go and there's this <clears throat> package or I actually, when I went out to the mailbox, I tripped over a box at the front door. They came up, and I guess UPS or FedEx, whoever dropped it off, left a box. And it was in an Amazon Prime box. I go, I don't think my wife ordered anything, but he'd reused the box. I didn't know that. I opened it up, and I found this very wonderful letter in the box. Thank you so much. Let me, I can read a few of these things in here. It says, uh, Dean Gaming is indeed a great means of escapism. Yet, in addition to escaping to the games themselves, it seems that for you it is as much about the community and camaraderie. And I couldn't agree more. Beautifully put, my friend. <clears throat> in a world of fakes and phonies, your authenticity sticks out and your contribution is a worthwhile one. I hope you keep it up. That means the world to me. You know, it's people like this that make me want to keep doing YouTube and not give up. Right now, I feel like giving up on a lot of things, and I, I'm... <clears throat> trying to stay focused and try to stay strong <clears throat> for my wife and for my family and for my friends. And it's things like this that give me that kind of strength. I, I can't thank you. This, this is as, means as much to me as the gifts, my friend. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Here is a token of thanks <clears throat> Excuse me, <clears throat> for keeping it real. The contents are described on the sheet. Take care and get well, sir, Michael. So I don't know who you are, Michael, and is a nice type list of everything that he sent and detailed description of what it is. Michael, thank you so much for this. I'm going to cherish this as much as I am the games. I hang on to every letter I've got since 2012. I still have on my desk, by the way. He sent me, he, he, said, I, he mentioned in an email, he said, Dean, I know you like PlayStation 1 tall boxes. I have a tall box PS1 game for you. So I was expecting, okay, good. He'll send a, a game for me in it. This is a game I've always wanted to play. I remember seeing this in 1995 or so at the stores, and I regret that I passed on it, and then I never saw it again. And that's DEFCON 5. Complete, with the manual, a beautiful disc, excellent condition. It's got the thick um, strategy guide. It's very, it's a really meaty, it has a lot of the FMV videos, full motion videos of characters and people. But it's like a military, you know, the end of the world, your nuclear thing, and it's, it's a very cool, uh, like a shooter, kind of like a spaceship shooter, very cool. This is a game that I'm absolutely going to cherish. Thank you so much for this. Not only is it a handsome-looking box for my tall box collection, but it's a game that I've actually really been high on my list to get, and I've never, ever come across one. Thank you so much. I will cherish this. He, he loves the game as well and told me so. He said he's played it several times and really loves it. So... <clears throat> Then he also sent me, 
oh my god, this is such a treat. Factory seal, it's never been opened. This is brand new, even though it's a very old strategy guide. Stranglehold. My god, the John Woo Stranglehold. This is one of my favorite guilty pleasures from the 7th gen. My god, do I love this game. I have got to play this game. Now I'm obsessed with playing this game again. It's like Max Payne on roids. It's over the top. It's so damn good. My friend Michael, thank you so much for this. I'm gonna, I wanted to leave it sealed in the plastic. I'm dying to do this video just like make the plastic off and, and dig into this tonight. Thank you so much. It's so appreciated. I absolutely cherish that. And then he sent me two other things. Now this is a game I've seen a lot of people talking about in the last month or so, but I don't know anything about it. This is when I was working a lot, and I saw video clips of it, but I didn't know what it is. It's Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Brand new factory sealed. It was very thoughtful of me to get this for me. This looks like a very nice... It's supposed to be a really tough game, like a Demon Souls level type card game, and I love challenging games that you really slog through and have that sense of accomplishment <clears throat> beating. This is one of them, and not only that, this is probably a break my back to lift this. Oh, he sent a... Um, Shadows Die Twice, Sakaro, huge strategy guide, art book. My God, is this absolutely beautiful inside. You have no idea how lovely this book is. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Incredible details and maps and artwork and game stills of scenes along the way in it. This is a beautiful, beautiful addition to my strategy guide, hardbound strategy guide collection. Thank you so much, my friend. I'm going to cherish the game in this book. <clears throat> I wasn't going to buy any more new games this year. I've got so many. Here's a slip sheet that came with it. And this guy <clears throat> sends me this wonderful game and strategy guide. Thank you so much. You know, that letter, like I said, that letter alone is just cherished. I have a special file folder where I keep all of these letters I've had over the years from people. And it's just so wonderful to go back down memory lane and to see all of this stuff again. Uh, it means so much to me. So <clears throat> let me get a sip of <clears throat> some um, apple juice here. I've <clears throat> my voice is a little hoarse. So you have to excuse me. I haven't I've only got like three hours sleep less. I'm very tired, but I wanted to do this in the worst way. <clears throat> I've been saving something very special for last. <clears throat> Not that it's any more important than anything else here. <clears throat> But this is something that I've wanted for <clears throat> literally over 40 years. <clears throat> Sometimes I wonder how differently my life would have been today if my dad would have just bought me this, <clears throat> you know, when I asked him for it. I asked him probably too many times for it, and he got to the point where he said, don't ever ask again. And I, so I just dropped it after that. But every time I go to a friend's house and I'd see them playing on one, I'd beg to spend the night, and I was obsessed with playing it and I just and I hated going back home and not having that experience. You don't know what it's like to grow up to want something so bad and never to have it materialize. It's these kids today have everything they want and they're still miserable and jaded and indifferent, which is very sad to me because I would have given anything to have one of this with just one or two games. I would have been very happy. <clears throat> so I've been following a good friend of mine, Silver Wings 21. I've been following a lot of Let's Players, Phil at DSP from the beginning. I actually used to interact with Phil early on when he first started his channel. I mean, that's how long I've been following him. He was my favorite Let's Player for some time. And it's sad to even to go off on a little tangent here, <clears throat> that even the people that have so much hatred for Phil, or Metal Jesus, or John Hancock, and these people, that they have whole channels dedicated to just hating these people. You can see it's just pure resentment, frankly, a lot of it, which is very pathetic and sad. <clears throat> but Phil at DSP has just been hated. I've never seen anyone hated so much. That guy still gets up every day and produces his videos. I don't know how he does it. I don't know why he didn't throw the towel in years before. I followed him when he had his little apartment in Connecticut and first got it. I remember him from the beginning, and I still follow him to this day. I don't interact with him anymore. I used to talk to him on Twitter once in a while. Every now and then he'd interact, but more favorite my tweet. But it's been many years. Um, <clears throat> camera out of Industrial Gamer knew him as well from Machinima from years ago and interacted with him quite a bit. So it's sad to see him get beat up on. I, I don't understand the people that build their channels on the hate of other people. It's just, really guys? I mean, come on. Life is too short. 
Well, anyway, my friend <clears throat> Silverwings21, he's someone new in the last maybe couple of years that I discovered. I was looking for some random game. I can't even remember what it was. Maybe a PS1 game or an older game. And I saw this guy that masterfully went through a game. In fact, he recently did a, a complete playthrough of Super Star Wars and makes the game look easy. This is a game where, I mean, I, I tried my hardest to beat it and could not... I get, like, one level from the end. I almost made it to the last, like, second to the last level, <clears throat> and I couldn't get... I couldn't finish it. I couldn't beat it. I wouldn't put it on easy at the time. I was a masochist back then. Today I would replay it on easy. I even have it on the PlayStation 4. <sighs> Excuse me. <sighs> at the PlayStation Store. Um, <clears throat> but uh, <clears throat> anyway, he's a fantastic Let's Player. I have never seen, and I can honestly say this, Phil at DSP is pretty good at most games, but sucks at a lot of them. This fellow, Silverwings21, is got to be, he's like a Guinness Book of World's Record caliber person. This is a very special gamer. And I say this with all sincerity. I have never seen anyone that could play through Duke Nukem Time to Kill as fast and effortlessly as he did. He had, he wrestled with some of the controls. He made a few decisions that I wouldn't have made in the game where I've beaten it several times myself, and it's tough. Mark Bustler <clears throat> couldn't even beat it. Uh, <clears throat> even though he he, was, he tried to play it for me and said, dude, dude, I used up my three lives, or whatever he had left it halfway into the game and couldn't, couldn't do it. And actually sent me a letter apologizing. <clears throat> he made it look easy. So I... I, because I loved his, his his gameplay videos so much, this guy can play old Atari sixty uh, Atari twenty six games. He can play old Super NES games, and he makes them look so Neo Geo games especially. He's uh, absolute like Jedi master powers with any game and beats them on hard. Plays completes every single game in his collection, or it isn't in his collection. And that's my good friend, Silverwings21. He always leaves wonderful comments and very in-depth, a very meticulous, very detail-oriented person, which I have the highest respect for. <clears throat> a really cool gamer. Well, he read between the lines. He must have seen a bunch of my vlogs over the years and knew I wanted this and sent me an Atari 2600. Dude, thank you so much, finally, after all these years. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's in mint condition. He said that he told me <clears throat> through an email, he said after, after I got it, he said, yeah, I, I tried to find one. The first one I got didn't work. And the guy only refunded half the money but said he could keep it. And he had actually kept some of the power cords. And he found another one that worked, but it didn't come with the cords. So he eventually accumulated all the pieces. Someone went through a lot of work to get it. And he's got two controllers with it. <clears throat> Excellent condition. The controllers aren't worn out either. They work good. Uh, I've got to get Steve to come over and help me move my giant heavy TV out in my game room so I can even hook this thing up. Because i I got to hook it around with the coaxial in the back, and I, I don't dare look, try to move that thing. That thing weighs a ton. Beautiful wood grain Atari 2600. And not only that, but sent me a shitload of games. Let me put my old man glasses on here. Solar Fox. Game Pro Air Sea Battle. This one I played, God, years ago. Pitfall I played. So cool. Space Invaders. One of my favorites. Another one I played. Combat I played at a couple different friends' homes when I was a kid. Very cool. Oops. <clears throat> Asteroids. Very cool. Outlaw. I've never played that one. So I'm anxious to try all of these. And believe me, I'm going to try them all. Video pinball, very cool. This is awesome. Another combat has tank, tank pong, invisible tank, biplane, and jet fighter. So cool. You realize what just a couple of these as a kid, my childhood would have been the greatest. You know, I, I, I spent a lot of time reading books and playing like board games, and that's how I occupied my time, being alone in my room quite often. Bowling, very cool. Mega Mania, a space nightmare. <laughs> very awesome. Awesome, dude. Thanks. Football, <clears throat> very cool. Ooh, Pac-Man. Thank God. One of my favorite games in the Atari 2600. And then he had three that didn't work. They didn't work for him as he tested them. And that's Yara's Revenge, which I actually would very much like to, to play. Um, Oink, 
whatever that is. I've never seen that one. And Breakout. Now, and I still have, um, oh, Mark Bustler sent me, he even signed it. It says, Dean, thank you, Mark Bustler of Classic Game Room. If you look closely, you can read it. This is the, the actual super breakout that Mark reviewed on, on Classic Game Room. He sent me, along with, I have beer glasses, I've got steins, I've got <clears throat> several uh, t-shirts from Classic Game Room, so much. So now, this is the only 2600 game I've had my whole life. So, dude, thank you so much. Now i got a 2600 to play not only Mark Bustler's game, but all the wonderful games that you sent. This was a way over the top, above and beyond gift. This represents a lifetime, a decade that I just wanted one of these so bad. You have no idea to, to long for something as a child and to, to not have it, you know. My dad did get, get me a nice bike. I did have a very nice bike initially, and eventually he bought me a nice 10-speed, because, you know, I could use it to go to school, too, so it helped. It was transportation as well, but I took good care of my things. I've always maintained my things, and I begged my dad, God, give me one. I'll baby it, take care of it. I'll never ask for anything else, and he just <laughs> wouldn't do it. He would not do it, and it's been frustrating. I'm tempted to shove this in his face when he comes over here, but I don't want all hell to break loose. I'm trying to make peace with him right now and bury the hatchet, so it's probably not a good idea, but Next time he comes over, I'll have him see me playing Urban Chaos instead. Even that'll set him off. God, here he goes with his violent video games! <laughs> Dad just never changes. He's always the same. God love him. <clears throat> well, anyway, thank you, dude, so much. Silverwings21. This is a, a gift that we'll keep on giving. <clears throat> I'm going to proudly display this. I'm going to hook it up in the game. I'm going to have the coaxial permanently hooked up in the back of the TV where I can plug it into this. But I definitely want to have this in my game room on display as well because I absolutely love this as much as Mark Bustler loves his. Mark's got the six-switch one. Good for him. But I, I'm very happy with this. This is a gorgeous, very clean model. Very clean. Very nice. He knows I like things that are clean and nice. And he did a beautiful job. The controllers, everything, are in just excellent condition. Very, very nice. Thank you so much, guys. So that was my little rant anyway. <clears throat> about being yourself and about, <clears throat> you know, do if you have a YouTube channel, contribute what's unique to you. Be yourself and be authentic. <clears throat> and don't, even my thumbnails, I mean, even way back, I said, what can I do to make my thumbnails different from everyone else's? So I came up with the black backgrounds. Now IGN actually uses a black background, not that they copied me, but you see a lot of people using black backgrounds now with the bright primary colored lettering or whatever, because it does stand out. It's just different. I just wanted to set my show out to be different, and, it, and I haven't changed it. You look back, my, all my thumbnails going back to 2012 are all the same. I'm, my set's been exactly the same. It never changes. When I moved to this house, I made my orange stripe here about one inch wider. Other than that, it's basically the exact same set. I don't always sit in front of it. I try to change it up. You know, that was another thing. Is in, when I first did the show the first couple of years, I did every single show in front of the same position. So I thought I'd let other people see other forms of the game room. Sometimes I have a bookshelf right over here. I'll sit in front of the bookshelf and do a rant. Or I'll sit on the corner on the other end of these shelves by the window <clears throat> with Vinny over there or something. But I try to break it up. Today I said, you know, I'll do it in the old days like I did in the beginning and sit in front of my old ex Escape to Gaming sign. And by the way, I've got something very special to announce, something very new that I'm going to be doing real soon. And I'm really interested to get your feedback on it, guys. I think you're really going to like what I'm going to come up with. i got a couple new things I'm working on. i got all the time in the world now, as I'm out of work, sadly, until I can get my back fixed. So I'm trying to see what can I do. And I'm trying to find ways, even now, I'm, this is the, I push the limits sitting here. This is the longest I've ever sat in a chair. Even when I did my Xbox video, I actually got a break halfway into it. I was able to get up and walk around, and take a pain pill, and then go back to finishing it. So... I haven't had one yet, so I'm in rough shape, but I'm going to end this here anyway, guys. Thank you so much, Michael and Silverwings21 and the other fellow. Thank you so much for your wonderful gifts. And thank all of you out there that made, for the 2,000 subscribers that I have, I'm so appreciative. You guys mean everything to me. Out of those 2,000, maybe half of those people actually watch, but I'm so appreciative for the people that watch and that even take the time to comment. It really means a lot to me. 
It gives me, <clears throat> reminds me that I'm still in a world where friends, where people can interact and share good times together. And that's what YouTube to me is all about, is expressing yourself and trying to share the good times of gaming and, and, and share what you love, what makes it so great. That's what keeps us all excited and keeps us all enthralled with this wonderful passion of a hobby that we all love, which is gaming. So thank you so much, guys. Enjoy your games and your collections. Thank you.